Prohibition in the 1920s by Henry Laberanti. In the history of the United States, Prohibition, also known as the Noble Experiment, is the period from 1919 to 1933, during which the sale, manufacture, and transportation of alcohol for consumption were banned nationally as mandated in the 18th Amendment to the United States Constitution. Following significant pressure from the temperance movement, the United States Senate proposed the 18th Amendment on December 18, 1917. Having been approved by 36 states, the 18th Amendment was ratified on January 16, 1919 and effected on January 16, 1920. Some state legislators had already enacted statewide prohibition prior to the ratification of the 18th Amendment. The Volstead Act, the popular name for the National Prohibition Act, passed through Congress over Woodrow Wilson's veto on October 28, 1919, and established the legal definition of intoxicating liquor. Though the Volstead Act prohibited the sale of alcohol, it did little to enforce the law. The illegal production and distribution of liquor or bootlegging became rampant, and the national government did not have the means or desire to try to enforce every border, lake, river, and speakeasy in America. In fact, by 1925 in New York City alone, there were anywhere from 30,000 to 100,000 speakeasy clubs. Prohibition became increasingly unpopular during the Great Depression, especially in larger cities. On March 23, 1933, President Franklin Roosevelt signed into law an amendment to the Volstead Act, known as the Cullen Harrison Act, allowing the manufacture and sale of certain kinds of alcoholic beverages. On December 5, 1933, the ratification of the 21st Amendment repealed the 18th Amendment. Many social problems have been attributed to the Prohibition era. Mafia groups limited their activities to gambling and thievery until 1920, when organized bootlegging manifested in response to the effect of Prohibition. A profitable, often violent, black market for alcohol flourished. Powerful gangs corrupted law enforcement agencies, leading to racketeering. Stronger liquor surged in popularity because its potency made it more profitable to smuggle. Prohibition had a notable effect on the alcohol brewing industry in the United States. When Prohibition ended, only half the breweries that had previously existed reopened. The post-Prohibition period saw the introduction of the American lager style of beer, which dominates today. Wine historians also note that Prohibition destroyed what was a fledging wine industry in the United States. Productive wine quality grapevines were replaced by lower quality vines growing thicker skinned grapes that could be more easily transported. Much of the institutional knowledge was also lost as winemakers either emigrated to other wine producing countries or left the business altogether. At the end of Prohibition, some supporters openly admitted its failure. A quote from a letter written in 1932 by wealthy industrialist John D. Rockefeller Jr. states, When Prohibition was introduced, I hoped that it would be widely supported by public opinion, and the day would soon come when the evil effects of alcohol would be recognized. I have slowly and reluctantly come to believe that this has not been the result. Instead, Drinking has generally increased, the speakeasy has replaced the saloon, a vast army of lawbreakers has appeared, many of our best citizens have openly ignored prohibition, respect for the law has been greatly lessened, and crime has increased to a level never seen before.